Welcome, everybody. We are back with the rewatch. Had a week off. Hope nobody abandoned us, but we are now going on to episode seven of this steaming pile of dog shit. Um, we are joined this week by the Aspiring Dark One. Seems a bit odd name for a white cloak, um, given how uh, puritanical we are. But uh, we'll let him explain that in a little bit. But first, as you guys should know, I'm like a bottle deep. I'm already fucking sloshed. Um, I got another bottle and plenty of whiskey as backup. But uh, Alex, what are you drinking today? I know it was college game day. Um, hopefully you're as buzzed as I am. What are you on, bud? I am on uh, Goldilocks Golden Ale. This was one of my, uh, I always like to try a new local one. And uh, it had a uh, smoking hot blonde and an angry bear behind her. So I figured, what the fuck, why not? Well, that, that sounds almost Canadian literature in uh, terms of its um, um, symbolism. Because I, I think a classic Canadian book was called Bear, which was a erotic fiction about a woman and a bear. So yeah, maybe, maybe they had some Goldilocks. Dude, you Canadians are freaking weird, man. I was going to say, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment. Just, yeah, All the right. old, the classic Canadian tale about uh, buxom blondes and bestiality. Like, you know, yeah. as as one does. Well, you're a resident gelding, so uh, Pips, what are you on this week? Uh, I am drinking uh, the Macallan. Uh, it's their double oak gold, and it is quite tasty. Excellent. Excellent. So you guys are getting uh, good and sloshed with me. Um, Canadian literature jokes notwithstanding. But uh, our guest this week, we have the aspiring Dark One, who um, we might have to hang alongside Peter Connell at the end of this. But uh, for the time being, let's, uh, let's keep in mind we haven't submitted him to the questioners. But uh, ADO, as we're going to be calling you, yeah? We've got uh, two general questions uh, that we give all our guests. And the first is, what are you drinking? If you're drinking, don't need to. And your connection to the Wheel of Time. So please indulge us on both. Anyways, ADO, glad to have you on. Definitely pipe, pipe in, like uh, give us your best shots on all this. But uh, on this part of the rewatch, it's the first third. We are going to try and get to where Patton Fane walks through a waygate inexplicably because he can't channel. But in the meantime, we have got the placenta snow to get through first. We have got the ways and the mean girls, Regina George, who is uh, stepping in for Match and Shin, going to get through all that. We are going to try and have our mid-episode break um, kind of maybe when they all go to sleep in the ways. We don't know. We'll play it by ear. Um, but we are back. We had a week off. We're going to get through this. Uh, rings of power. Everyone's deflated about it. Let's get back to hating on Wheel of Time. And with no further ado, um, I say, Pips, let's get going. Uh, do we have to? Are you sure there's not, like, literally anything else we could do? Tear <laughs> um, this band-aid off, boys. Uh, no, no, it's like if you want, like I, I'm thinking about getting Elden Ring on the PS4. Maybe we can like multiplay that. <laughs> uh, that does sound better. I'm just mostly concerned. I'm not sure that I have enough alcohol in my glass still, but uh, screw it. Let's let's do it live. Here, here it is, boys. <laughs> Remember, we're drinking for four of us. All right. Can you pause here? She's wearing a mask good but it's not like a shufa yeah that is a that's a covid mask and she's got yeah. three short spears on her back it actually made reason. me think about like the uh the little like neoprene kind of face masks you wear when you're out in the mm -hmm. snow or something like that you know like mm -hmm. i think she just picked that up at rei i don't know that might be a store that canadians don't know about but uh there you go it's an outdoor store. we don't <laughs> now here, here's a question for you for ado um, do you think they adjusted her armor for her prego belly? Yes or no? They'd have to, right? <laughs> I just I can't imagine 
doing otherwise. So she she has specific pregnancy like maternity wear armor. She has to get like Am I wrong here? Sets. You're not she has to get, like several sets for as it keeps growing. <laughs> like, like she went to like time maternity and got, oh, I need a breastplate. Um, but it needs to have enough room for my baby bump, and then we'll get something underneath. But like we know she's not pregnant here. This is just fuck, what is this? It's a it's a pillow. This, this is the worst f- yeah, it's the it's, work, it's a worst it's fucking <laughs> Pillow prego belly ever, but again, let's let's keep an eye out in season two when we see more Aiel. But I'm pretty sure none of them have armor like this. So she did get maternity armor, which is um, levels of retardation higher than uh, most people will admit. I just like uh, this is this is kind of serendipitous. So uh, the guy laying on the ground dead behind her has a shield. A, it looks like a kite shield with what mm-hmm. appears to be the Ilianer bees on it, right? Yeah, n- nine bees and has a, a golden cloak. Yep. Like so he's one of the see from the others. So he's one of the companions, which we'll see later. Uh strangely, none of them have a shield because that would have made her way easier to kill. <laughs> not so, to pick up this shield either. Yeah, is, so. it, is it wrong that I'm actually kind of proud of them for getting the nine bees? Like, I I would have assumed that they would have just thrown something generic in there, but they might I'm, not be bees though. There's nine of something, but like we don't know what it is yet. See, I would say that actually that that meets about the threshold that I would expect from them, where they're about to show us a ridiculous scene of lore breaking, namely that an Aiel person kills people with her veil undone, right? But they're going to point to the fact that they had these nine bees as evidence of the fact of how lore accurate they are, which is what this show fucking does the entire time. It takes a big old shit all over the story and the lore and the world building and then is like, jingle the keys in front of your face and be like, see though? Like, there's a heron on the sword. You know, like, yeah, it's the fucking wrong sword, though. <laughs> That's an extremely valid point. Here's my question, and maybe it's just because I'm getting fucking loaded. Um, but, Always uh, a valid reason to ask a question. Yeah. How, how narrow do you think the wood part of this spear is? Because it looks like a fucking dowling. It's pretty thin, yeah. About as thick as a finger. <laughs> Sort of like a Who has kind of a spears like this. It's kind of like, like the rule of thumb. I mean, you know, can't do much damage with that now. Should have been the rule of risk, maybe. <laughs> this is where I'm going. I thought it's I like... wasn't gonna go there, but <laughs> <laughs> one of us did. <laughs> like I know it's a short spear and you're sp- it's like a stabbing weapon, but still, like ev- any fucking sword that came across this would just hack this piece of wood in half. If it came to like a one-on-one fight, like this does not shout a yield spear to me at all. Well, but, I think you'll um, just break at one thrust. The, yeah, well, it's, it's going to sh- shatter. Well, I mean, give credit where credit's due. She did bring three of them because she knows they're going to break. Yeah, but all I yield have like at least three short spears. It's just not on their back because uh, we all know how useful back. Yeah, because they're supposed are. to carry them in one hand that has a hide buckler belted onto it. Uh, but anyway, okay, here we go. The... At least, at least she has a shufa, right? Yeah, just uh, and, and she's she's gonna stay veiled for this fight. Oh, I'm spoiling uh, shit. Yeah, you've already spoiled shit. Don't be so drunk that you forget that. I mean, the entire can't thing is a spoiler. Like, <laughs> can't help it. Unfortunately, I didn't pause that properly. They're just shooting at the yeah. mountain. <laughs> yes, they're not shooting at an encampment. <laughs> or I suppose maybe they're shooting at their own encampment. The general area that they're attacking with those catapults or whatever they are is clearly the remnants of the Ilianer camp. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess she's just strolling through like a massive friendly fire situation. <laughs> I, I guess, yeah, wouldn't that be the Ilianers firing it? Yeah, she's she's running through friendly fire. That's a... Fucking hell, why are we doing... Oh my god, I hate this show. <laughs> they must why why are you shooting things. up the mountain with your artillery? Like, it doesn't make any sense. No. None of this makes sense. Because the... 
the mountain she said gets, something she racist. She gets probably. stabbed in the womb later, so like I shouldn't be complaining about not making sense. Yeah, yeah, she also defies laws of physics with her wire fighting. So you know, look, they had they were buying some Bollywood actors for this show, and they had a little bit of money left over and bought some Bollywood physics. They they had to put it somewhere. <laughs> well, that's bigoted, ADO. <laughs> Oh, uh, if they had, if they had bought, try not to cancel us next time. Fuck me. If they hey, had I'm got, Indian. I'm allowed to make fun of Bollywood. To <laughs> say if they imported, you're literally... Indian. Yes. Adios, oh. Indian. Sweet. I didn't know that. We got more represent. We got non-book reader, non-drinker, and now uh, non-white representation. Finally, like uh, <laughs> yes. Alex. Alex, I know your avatar looks non-white, but like, yeah, we all know that. <laughs> it's an homage. It is. <laughs> uh, he's he's white for a horse. That's <sighs> Pettis. Let's and he's brown. Let's fire let's this going. thing up. <laughs> that is a full-on fucking COVID mask. Do you see how it's cut and it like yep. goes over her nose and shit? There you go. So they're they're just attacking the mountain. <laughs> Multiple times. Okay, so here's well, they're shooting at each other. Now that I'm looking, no, yep. no, they're not. There's no, two no, rocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One's landing. It's they're both flaming rocks. Yep. With uh, contrails. Okay, so she just ran from the direction from behind this rock, right? And she's yeah. been she's been running for like a while and looking around. So there's no one else around. Yes, that's what I was going to get to. So another Why is here. Another example of teleporting? No, oh, so absolutely. The reason why she's here, ADO, if you if you get to a reread of The Eye of the World, is because battles are always hot, and you have to get away. So when Tam stumbles across dead Shail and baby Rand, who should have been dead but was still crying and almost blue in the face, it's because it was away from the battle. It wasn't the fucking center of a battle. Um, and it's like why I'm asking. It's like you're in the heat of one. Why are you here? <laughs> but she you have been, that entire like, mountain. Shail wasn't in the battle. Like she was there with the Aiel, but the issue was whether or not she should have been sent away from the whole Aiel army. It's not like she was warrior Yas Queen Slay Queen, who was their trump card in their fucking fight. No, it's. Tam stumbled away from the battle and he happened upon where Shail had given birth to Rand out of the way of all the main fighting. Mm -hmm. And and that that's what it, that's what pisses me off about this. Like what's coming up, some people say, oh, cool action sequence. And I I we're getting back to where um, the show is using actual book events rather than making up fan fiction. So I'm liking this less, and I'm struggling with it. Sorry, guys, so, but this is fucking painful I'll, for me. I yeah, still say yeah, this yeah. is fan fiction. There was no battle reference for when she was giving birth. Like, no, you just wanted to add that in. It's fucking so, well, so, so I don't. There was a battle. It was tangential to it, right? It was the blood snow where Rand was born, but Chayil wasn't in it. She wasn't in the thick of it. She was off to the side of it. Tam had to escape that battle, and that's how he stumbled upon Rand in the first place. So, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be as fair as I can be for this scene. Um, if she had been running through that camp, uh, especially if she had been with a couple other maidens and had had a few fights, killed a few people with some other maidens, some of them got injured... She managed to get herself away from the fight. She comes over behind this rock. She starts giving birth. Uh, it's going poorly. And then Tam basically shows up and she thinks like she puts her veil up like she's going to have to fight him. And he like drives his sword into the snow and like helps her deliver the baby. Honestly, it, it's not the way that it happened in the book. She was already dead before he showed up. But I would have been like, yeah, she went away from the fighting. Tam, away from the fighting, stumbled into her. It would have been potentially a good scene still. Uh, I think the only, the problem with this scene is that she runs over to behind this rock. And then, you know, the physics engine gets turned off. And the, you know, 
the damage per second gets bumped up to her spear. She gets a you know plus plus fifty against uh, against wetlanders, and <laughs> and you know she she starts doing the wire fighting right like that's that's where it's like oh this is ridiculous and then she pulls her veil down and you're just like fuck off, you know yeah and then she gets stabbed in the womb yeah so anyway yeah. let's look forward to that. Take off the other spear. Why? Cl clutches. Clutches her pillow. And. What? I'm Mississippi. He had the warder cloak that we haven't seen yet in this fucking show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, Fuck so that gold cloak. Plan? Sorry. Just ha yeah, true enough. If if you're that fucking uh, surreptitious, if you're that stealthy, and you slam your sword down on the rock above her shoulder rather than just like stab her through the neck, hmm. you're a shitty fucking Ilioner soldier. That's all I gotta say. I was gonna say it was very polite of him to miss. <laughs> <laughs> well, she is about given to have the mother and son brain damage done. <laughs> She is about to have some very accommodating enemies, like MCU level of accommodating enemies. So, yeah, that that spear would have split in half. Miss, like, <laughs> <laughs> good for like fucking. I said. Yeah, I know. But that, that's an insult to Bollywood, to okay. be quite honest. Okay, but, I, I think I mean you, you could see where, where his sword was aiming. He was always aiming like three feet left of his head of her head, right? I think I needed that hit guy was play. never gonna hit her. I need to hit play just to see how far he gets launched, right? Okay, seventeen feet. So so. The... I guess Rand gave her enough weight that she weighs now more than this fully grown man and can lift his off his feet. Well, I'm just thinking that he well, probably he's... weighs between 200 and 250 pounds with his armor, even if he's like a sort of smallish kind of medieval person. Uh, probably closer yeah, to Rand the 200 with his dick size. alone was probably weighing 20 pounds. Right? Yeah. I'm just saying that that cape would have just ripped off. Like... <laughs> Shout out to the to the tailor who made that uh, yeah. the cape. <laughs> the, re the rest of his armor can't stop a knife against a breastplate, but the cape, very well made. So, <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, okay, we all agree this is absolutely ridiculous. Like, yes. I just... This is pants on head, retarded. I, yep. can't, I can't understand the people who defend this and look at that scene and are like, that was awesome. Like, didn't you see that thing that completely turned your brain off and kicked you out of the, the thing? You're like, yeah, I'm watching a realistic fighting scene. And then all of a sudden, oh, she's she's an Avenger now. <laughs> like, Yeah, but uh, even the Avengers had superpowers and this chick doesn't. Well, think it she's, not, she, she's nine months pregnant for crying out loud. I think what like, makes so, this so jarring is that, like, this show has had sort of three major fights, and all three of them have been shitty, but all three of them have been in completely different styles. Like, yeah. this style has no resemblance to Land fighting at Winter Night. And neither one of those fights had anything resembling the Logan army fight. So... You know, if, if you're going to be bad, pick a style of bad. It's funny you say that, because if I kind of think back to remember watching this, watching this with my wife, who had not read any of the books at that point, uh, she actually, so we see this scene and then it goes to the credits, which we're going to skip here in a minute, but she literally looked over at me and asked if this was the same show. Like, she, <laughs> she, thought, she thought that I had told her, like, hey, like, we're going to watch episode whatever we're on seven of the wheel of time and she she thought that i had just turned on something else because i knew how much she hated the show at this point like 
it, yeah, I was definitely having to like force her to watch these with me as somebody to like commiserate with. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah, she thought that it was a different show. <laughs> now you found so- us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, Mrs. Pibbs. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, birth pangs. Yep. Way, way to kill someone without a veil, you fake Aiel. So for those people... Oh, did you see that crumble? For the people who say that she didn't have time to pull it down, first of all, an Aiel probably wouldn't have pulled it down in the middle of a battlefield in the first place, but yeah. she would have put it up between the first and second kill, guaranteed. Well, realistically, she would have put it up before the first one, but she plenty. she had plenty of time before this second one especially because it is noted in the books how lightning fast the Aiel can put these things up, which makes sense given that you are a warlike sort of culture that kills people all the time and has this weird sort of cultural thing where you have to be veiled to kill someone. Is it, is it just me or does this Ileaner have a breastplate that for some reason like stops at his rib cage? That is, I was going to say that. They specifically gave this guy a kind of armor that doesn't protect, like, half of him. I think, actually, no, it, it legitimately there. went through the plate. Yes. The plate just crumbled. Yeah. Did, did, it? It, did it? It yes, looks like it, it stabbed it, right under it. Nope. 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 It, is, uh, it is... So it's worse. Yes. So ADO and I are like, okay, this is stupid fucking armor, and you guys are saying, no, it's yeah. shitty armor. Let me, let, me see, let me see if I can pause it at all here. They, they have an example of the shitty armor anyways, but it's also, like, right there. It's really hard to see. It's, it's, not, e- it's not even in the same I know. spot. It's, it's, it looks it like he's just right holding through it. His, it went right through his, like, right under his breastbone before, and now yeah. it's off to the side. Well, in this scene, did it looks like he's just holding the end. Did you just go forward? We went forward. Not that I care. Like, this is, this is, this sucks. But, in, in this scene, it looks like he's honestly just holding the spear point in order to mime this out. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Why does he have his tongue uh, up like use that? Armor. Damn it. I can't. I literally can't pause it. They know that it's shit, and so they keep on trying to, like, quick cut away from it. Yeah. So have, how many people has she killed now? I have like no seven? idea how, three, how that... She's up to three. Where did the spear hit that dude? Was that a in spear or was that her, or did she throw the throwing knife was... back at him? So she threw the spear and it kind of looked like it hit him in the face, which, I mean, I guess anybody, everyone knows you don't aim for the head ever because mm-hmm. if you miss the head, you hit nothing, <laughs> right? Like you, you aim for the body. Uh, yeah. Uh, but she has plenty of time to put her veil on now, right? Shouting yep. in the distance. It continues. Oh, oh fuck. ADO, We've had go two ahead. Years. We've had two years to practice this. How long does it take you to put on a fucking mask as a normal human being? Maybe actually we're not giving this actress enough credit. Maybe she's just based as fuck and she like put in as a contractual requirement. She's like, I'll be in your stupid movie, but you're not making me wear a fucking mask. <laughs> For more than 50 seconds. Uh, I doubt it. So she runs over here. She grabs her other spears. Dual wielding spears. Aragorn and did it she better. Is, oh, <laughs> Aragorn did it better. She is nine months fucking pregnant. She's she got spe- special maternity armor on. <laughs> and who who watches this and is like, oh, wow, this is good action, and not like this is a caricature of a caricature. Love there's no her. nine months pregnant. There's no nine months pregnant woman that has ever done this in their life, or would ever be like, mm, "This is what I aspire to." Right? I show this to any person or any woman who's been nine months pregnant. Their response is going to be, "At nine months pregnant, I could barely waddle." <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, women don't like doing anything. <laughs> yeah. I also love this fighting style. It's wonderful. It's like it's when you see like bad like world star videos on like Twitter or something. 
arms down, face presented, is exactly how you're supposed to fight, right? Like Pips, they teach you that, you know, face first is how you want to do every fight, correct? She looks like she's doing the, like, Dragon Ball, no, not even Dragon she's doing Naruto. the Naruto run. She's doing the Naruto yeah. run. <laughs> I was about to say, she's doing the anime run right now. <laughs> <laughs> presenting the biggest fucking target possible come kill the dragon reborn in my fucking belly thank god nobody has another one of those throwing knives also true that what is it with everyone is... in the fucking like trollocs and soldiers having throwing knives what like a crossbow what? bolt or an arrow yes that makes sense not... a thrown spear also Pip, makes sense pips pips not, not throwing, throwing knives throwing knife singular <laughs> Well, they I meant, only get one throwing knife. I just meant lots of people have knives on the battlefield yes. for some fucking it, reason. But, all, it's but an only one. Weapon. <laughs> it's an instacal weapon. That's why you have to carry only one of them for balance. Well, I mean, I, I'm running low on wine. Like, we got to keep going or else. <laughs> you know, it's actually all of us. All of us probably played some old school FPS and we're discounting the fact that everyone runs faster with a knife. So... I think that's Real. probably what they're going for is uh yeah they just it's it's a movement it's a movement bonus I think is really what it is golden eye <laughs> maybe that's Blast. why he tried uh, stabbing her from behind a rock he's trying to get the double damage from a sneak attack <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck this show and then he missed <laughs> I love that she goes in and like doesn't if you're going to charge two people, right, you need you need to ultimately eliminate one of them as quickly as possible, right? And so she does the exact opposite of Not what her. you want to do, right? So you want to always keep them on the same side of you because if they get on if they get on multiple sides, if you get surrounded, you're totally screwed, right? And she's going to like start doing the right thing here in a second, but she runs at him full speed. She doesn't really attack either one she kind of does a quick little like parry thing and then stands in the middle of them before trying to parry and move past like no you run towards both of them you look like you're gonna pick one dude that's a feint and then you freaking stab the other guy as you like slide through or something right like this stop in between them literally the dumbest thing she could have done were those yep. spears bloody before this yes yes, yes they were why i don't know <laughs> because she's, okay. she's just been out massacring yeah. the honors <laughs> yeah she's just been straight fucking killing bitches that's why all right all right so continuity is fine. so they... so look at that look at that she doesn't even go in deep like when she's leaping back so i think the exact wrong yes. direction to go at least if she went the other way she would have yeah. all three on kind of the same side but no she puts herself in the middle of a triangle of people yeah, but this guy, this guy's got the Iliana breastplate. You can see right here, like it does not protect uh, below the sternum. Maybe, like, uh, yeah. maybe the designers were unsure about which person was going to have the pregnancy armor, and so, <laughs> so they just so every, all wearing maternity armor. They all well played. Every everybody's got maternity armor. Everybody's got uh, man's ear chest support. Yeah. So but, uh, no maybe, no protection from the the ninth rib down. Frankly, actually, all of us are kind of bigoted here because these three men could all be pregnant. So speak speak, speak for yourself. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a biologist. I can't. Uh, yeah. I can't comment. <laughs> all three of these men could be pregnant. They're wearing the maternity armor. We can't be confident about anything. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, sure. The sorcerer has been asking if these two might be pregnant. I think he might be right. Uh, they certainly it's fight like they based, are. Based is based. That, that's how she won. It's basically like we, we talked about uh, how unrealistic it was that a nine-month pregnant Shail could defeat all these Ilioner companions. Well, to be quite honest, these seven Ilioner companions were probably also nine months pregnant. So what you're saying Deal is with it. During Deal with these, it, bigot. No, dur during the camera you... all three months. And so <laughs> it adds up to the same. So during the uh <laughs> during the camera quick cuts here, you're saying that actually all of them were just bent over, getting a quick breath, <laughs> taking it like, hey, timeout, labor pains. We're all we're all on board for the timeout. Wait until everyone we're says all time in. Together. 
<laughs> they might not show the pregnancy bump because they have uh, beer bellies. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's get drunker. Okay. The dude oh, behind God. her, the dude behind her is the one that she threw that spear at that we thought hit him in the head, but now he's here again, I think. Maybe. I don't know. It's like bit. a bad video game. People just spawn from shadows. Like, <laughs> you're not paying attention to this door. That's where they come from. <laughs> uh... There probably is a door on the side of this fucking hill. Okay, Act. so she she finally remembered to get all of them on the same side of her. I guess that's good for for her. Taking a knee, a taking a knee in the middle of a fight's strange. Uh, she also spins at least once, so one of them could have just stabbed her in the back. Yeah, that's true. The dude behind her is actually holding his sword facing towards her still right now and could probably thrust there. She's going to finish that spin pretty quick. I still just want to highlight the fact that the knee, the knee that she's taking there, I didn't hear them start playing the national anthem, but that might have been edited out. Oh, so. piss. <laughs> that was savage. <laughs> It's fine. They're in Czechoslovakia. They can they can do a thing. <laughs> Country hasn't existed since the nineties. God, could these guys be worse sword fighters? Yeah, no. they could. They could cut themselves. I think the dude just did. The dude who just fell down. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he just fell down. Did her spears get oh. shorter in between shots or something? They I did. They did. Holy <laughs> fuck, they did. They pro the dowling got cut in half. They got. Well, <laughs> except that's that's a very that's a very clean break right there though. I think they just swapped it out for the short spear. <laughs> yeah, they absolutely did. The, the this is what they think a short spear is. The fucking dragon scepter Rand gets the thing he cut in half by accident. Uh, oh. You joke about that, but it's probably the same prop. And we're gonna see it yeah. next. We're gonna see it next season. I mean, in fairness, if you think about it, like a six foot spear, like trying to swing it, like, like one hand width below the sword, you would whack yourself in the gut trying to do this move. Well, also, uh, I don't know if you guys, so if you have ever tried to to do any sort of sword fighting at all, uh, or paid attention to it. So edge alignment on a cutting weapon is huge. If you don't have a well-aligned edge, you're Cheap. not going to cut fucking anything. So using a spear as a swinging weapon like that and holding it sort of mm -hmm. at the end of a thing, so you're like holding the end of the spear and you're kind of swinging them around. Basically, she's turned her two spears into mostly just a baton because edge alignment in that situation is going to be extremely oh. difficult. Right. Is this going to be a downward cut? So yeah, so so she's she's basically just fighting them with wooden batons at this point. Uh, super effective. Doesn't matter. Like that, their armor is made out of butter, anyways. Right. <laughs> How the fuck did that happen? She flipped that guy. Just tear that guy. Man, right in the maternity no. armor. <laughs> that's a fucking halter top that's not a breastplate that's a fucking halter top it's worse like that, than that that is an only fans like style like that covers your tits and nothing else what the fuck is this it's worse than that uh, it's literally got a, a big old split right down the middle yep. yeah <laughs> so it's like the weak part right, right where the cinch is like let's button up here Let's make sure there's no armor right down the middle where we might be vulnerable and hopefully no one stabs us here in our weak spot. Who the fuck designed this armor? Somebody that knew they were going to have to be some extraordinarily accommodating stuntmen. Like, I'm, I'm okay, <laughs> like, I, I'm sticking my hand up being like uh, Shad from Shadiversity. Give us some detail on the placenta snow and... Give us your thoughts on this armor because we've all been watching his videos as, as what is actual historical armor and what makes armor good. Um, pretty fucking sure no one in history had armor this bad. Uh, if it's not the uh, if it's not the Aiel lady with her 
the turn of the armor. I don't know. If, I don't know if he went through the armor or not. Uh, Scaligrim uh, went through yeah. this scene from a like sword versus spear fighting uh, perspective. I think it's been, oh, cool. been yes, a pretty long time. I'll uh, I'll try and find that link it in the description uh, when we post this up. But uh, yeah, so check that out in the description, guys. Otherwise, yeah, this is pretty terrible. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I actually saw that video right before this because I knew we were covering this scene and uh, I saw that video before and I thought he was too nice to it, even if he made sure to comment on its stupidity. Oh, did he did he point out the stupidity of edge alignment swinging your bullshit spears? I don't think he commented on that, no. He Heck commented yeah, on Pips. the... Heck yeah. Fuck yeah, Pips. <laughs> <laughs> Killing it over here. Not a, not a bloody gelding for the win. <laughs> Uh, you commented on the arm flip thing from earlier, and how that would never happen. Yeah, that was. Yeah, either what the, the arm fuck would break, or you would get fucked. Here's uh, my question: What the fuck is that circle thing at his fucking armpit? Uh, it looks or like his cape is supposed to be held. Oh, is that it? It fuck could. Uh, yeah, it could maybe. be like a decorative sort of rivet point. I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. <sighs> yeah, that's like the least bad thing. So he was holding both his hands on his one-handed sword so that he did nothing to block the thrust straight into his chest, as you do. Oh, birthing pains. Kill. Why? Oh, they miss on purpose and... <laughs> Did you see? Did you see? Yeah, that was awesome. It was. <laughs> two, two I thought stupid. this was a good idea. But two things stupid I want to point out. Did you see the swing he did behind her? How far back he reached with his sword before yes. trying mm -hmm. to swing it down? Yes. He has, may as well have been trying to throw a baseball all the way to fucking left field from the right. Well, so she's basically it not armored, right? So you wouldn't do a big. Like. You would just thrust the sword. Like, swords can also yeah. stab things. <laughs> like, you not don't every have to hack her fucking arm off. You can just, like, poke her a little bit. Like, I know we right? made fun of them for their wood chopping earlier, but, like, dude, I get Screw it. That. You screwed up the overhand chop before. You can't make up for it now. <laughs> <laughs> My fucking wood chopping has less of a swing than what he was trying. The most telegraph thing in the world. I mean, especially the wood chopping in this show did, in fact, have less of a swing. <laughs> yep. and Alex, the, worst part, I, the, the worst part was he was he was literally coming forward, and then he like stopped at the top of the swing because he realized she wasn't ready. <laughs> yeah, it looked like he got knocked back again or got slapped. Well, she was the one choreographing this fight, and she was in it, so... That's true. Okay. All right, so... And, uh, are we about to see her get stabbed in the womb? Is that is that what's happening? Well, okay, right before that, so. one more thing Skalagrim pointed out. Uh, he's, the spear, do you remember where it was before he started pulling him down? No. It's, uh, it's, like, at the back, and it comes from the left, and she's pulling him toward the left. So, oh my gosh. unless it, as Scott Logram said, unless okay, it has Spider Man powers. I don't want to do this, but we're going to do it. <laughs> going back in time? Yeah. All right. She's got oh, two yeah. spears. ADO, which one am I looking at? Her left hand spear well, or her right hand spear? Well, she's going to stab the sure one dude left. first. So, yeah. So, she's going to cut some legs. <laughs> okay. So, there's the slash, giant. Slash. There's the giant, like, big over-the-head swing forming. It's like a cum shot blood. And he did, in fact, pause. You saw that there. He did, in fact, there pause. Was, there was a spear through the neck, and now she's got one spear in her right hand, right? Yeah. Okay. I love her grip on that. She's, yeah, okay. She flips it over, and now she's going to do downward stab. Okay. Now it's right there. Yep. It's from the Is left. Is it through his neck? No, it's no, behind, no, his, it's head. behind no. his head. Yep. Okay. And uh, keep in mind, he still has a sword here. Yeah, this is like All when right. Lan, you know, grabbed grabbed Rand and left Rand holding a sword against his fucking inner thigh, where he could have just cut right into his femoral artery. Uh, nice. So 
I think I see what you're going to say here. So she's going to pull down into the left, right? Which would just have the spear roll off his shoulder and come come down essentially, and he would be able but to he would be able to move to his left while she pulled to her left, and he would just be out of this. How sharp the spear is, may, maybe he gets his neck sliced open from the side. She it, she doesn't even do that. He falls oh. backwards like they're dancing. Yeah, like she's right, dipping him in the middle of a dance. All right, let's let's see what it does. The fuck is this? What ha- <laughs> See? <laughs> what the fuck does that happen? What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> wait, 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 what the fuck is this? Like he pulled back, he slices neck open, and instead she pulls with the fucking spear? Yep. <laughs> ADO, you you fucking win this one. He's he's making You the... win this. I, okay, guys, g- give me a minute. I I need to get whiskey, because I don't think I can fucking handle this without. So give me a sec. I'll I'll go get my fucking uh, my ice rocks. I'm not going to animate you leaving, just so you know. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. In, in my new apartment, it's not really like uh, leaving at all. Cause, and I got the wireless headphones, so I can hear you guys. So don't worry about it. Look at... I was really hoping Dan was going to be able to give us some of the lore about how the Aiel you stick them on the on their spears <laughs> so that they, they they touch their spears to somebody they can fling them. Uh, no, actually, the uh, the official rules they they changed it just a couple years ago. They outlawed stick them for for uh, for them. I think is is actually what happened. So now now they're using a substandard product. You know. Just some super Wait, what? We're, there are we're no saying, rules about stick em. We're saying it's magnets. <laughs> that she has a magnetic spear that it's attached to his armor, and that's why he was... That would require his armor to be metal, which we haven't seen it to be yet. <laughs> so far, very true. So far, it looks like styrofoam, maybe paper, paper mache, uh, other cellulose-based products. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, that's what this it is. is. This scene is a disaster. <laughs> And we're only halfway through it. What? She should be dead already. <laughs> he was holding a sword when this happened. He had to drop his sword to grab her in this hand. <laughs> it's unbecoming to grab a lady while you're holding a sword. <laughs> yep. Uh, That's it. She yeah. should be dead. She should be dead. Keeps ran dabbing. I know. Also, yeah, double tap, dude. Like, didn't you watch Zombieland? <laughs> I'll compliment the show, though. They do a very good job at showing the mentally disabled with Rand. <laughs> right. <laughs> Clearly, this had some kind of effect he, on him. He lost oxygen in vitro <laughs> or in utero. <laughs> the Tavera uh, did not save him from that. Uh... We're canceled. <laughs> All right. So, like, a long time to stab him again. Or her, sorry. She, she, she got full on stabbed there, right? That's like, yes. She, she got stabbed more by that fucking thing than John Duin's dick, right? She, <laughs> that's nine inches of fucking steel in her side, rather than like the seven inches upper cooch. The uh, the only stabbing we've seen worse than that in this show was Moraine getting a fucking sword through the heart in episode one. True enough. <laughs> but that went through her. This one just went, like, right into her. But uh... Well, how they get through Rand, and Rand's very difficult with how dense he is to cut through. And I'm super glad that Rand was uh, hanging out on the right side. All right. <sighs> So this guy was like, I stabbed you first, and uh, she yells like, well, I stabbed you last. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so what happened is he he cast his stab, but then she she put hers on the stack after that, and the stack resolves top to bottom, and then state-based actions get checked. So... Are you talking 5th edition rules here? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't even know uh... what fucking game you're talking about now. <laughs> I think, I think he's talking Magic the Gathering, and I'm still stuck on 3rd edition d and <laughs> I'm trying to see where that knife goes. I think it's straight into his right throat. Right into his throat. It's yeah. throat. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> also, yes, yeah, Space Stories to make a good comment. There are bees on his armor. Yep. Yep. Not nine of them. And uh, how fake is this prego belly right here? Because I'm sorry, if you're nine months pregnant, you don't have a flat chest like that. You got a good fucking set of milkers. <laughs> Wow, okay. Uh, we're like, so this handsome. is egregious. Look at this. Look at this. This is a fucking pillow. But, like, human anatomy does not look like this under any circumstances. Even, like, even constricted by armor. Like, if she's got maternity armor on, like, no. No nice. fucking way will her chest be this flat and her, like, fake prego belly that distended stabbed or not no one has looked pregnant like this in the history of humankind <laughs> i've often except told... maybe if she's czech because they're fucking weird <laughs> i've often called being pregnant as having a parasite in you that's feeding off of you and i you guess took that's that from house <laughs> md <laughs> i actually I have not actually. I don't know what that is. What? It's a great show. You should watch it. It's a great, it. great, great show. You should watch it. It's maybe before your time. Maybe. Watch four episodes and you've seen all of them. All right. And, That's true uh, enough. No, there's there's a different hot girl as part of the team throughout the seasons. House MD. <laughs> Alex is right. Watch four episodes. You see them all, but it's still good. Uh. -huh. uh, uh Zane, you have the obligatory Jesus fucking Christ from Trip again. <laughs> Wait. Over your milkers. Yeah, comment. okay, that's the chat. That's, I, I ignore those. It's okay. You, it's we're, your we're job to look <laughs> Wait, no, no. I, I've upgraded. I. All I do is drink and no things. Okay. That's what I do. Okay. I paused here for a reason. You each have one guess why I paused here. Starting with Dane. Straight how easily the uh, the cape came off. Alex wins. Alex playlist. wins. Alex wins. <laughs> <laughs> she needs a blanket to give uh, birth on? No, Alex was correct. <laughs> okay. Good. Fuck the show. Like we can keep going. Like this is a time saver now. Like how how, uh, how long are we going? <laughs> God, put your fucking veil up, you fake Aiko. I just like how far I'm stabbed in the fucking abdomen. I just like at this point she's, she's thinking about trying to find cover. Also, I guess we'll see here in a second. <laughs> see here in a second. Is this rock smaller than it was before? Yes. Hmm. It was past her head where she when she was sitting. Pretty that's sure. The you, that's part of why I'm like, what was your plan? You were trying to aim from her from a rock and a bad angle. Pretty no, sure. now it's pretty sure there's super revealing. Yeah, pretty sure the rock this was is bigger. A different rock. Do you think that their set has two rocks in it? <laughs> oh my gosh. What is all right, what is happening? Well, stick your hands up if you've ever had a woman rip her pants apart like this for you. Like, I have, but it wasn't when she was pregnant. Nobody believes you, Dane. <laughs> Come on. I like that the katana has a rounded end. How the fuck does she not notice him coming? Uh, well, because see, as we've already established, Ilya and her companions can teleport. <laughs> Yeah, see, yeah. he has the water cloak again. The see, respawn, the, cloak. the respawn point. It it's was... got the fucking halter top breastplate. Yep. Like yep. the this is Garen fucking tea. It's like oh, all right, let's make a breastplate and let's make sure it like goes up above our fucking sternum. You know, I will say that uh, I I can appreciate the fact that they have armor at all because think about all of the oh, fighting. Think of, Didn't one get stabbed through the back by a dagger that was thrown? Sure. I'm just saying, think of all the fight scenes we've had before. I don't think we've seen armor in this show before this. The fight scenes we've had before are like Dana the Dark Friend. No, like, like the, uh, the attack at the Aes Sedai yeah. camp, right? None of the warders, none of the soldiers, no one had any armor. Lan, no armor. 
no anything pajamas like literally the cold the cold the logan cold open the king had his flavor flav armor oh that's true <laughs> okay maybe they only put armor in cold opens is that a budget thing maybe it, it might actually be <laughs> <laughs> it's a different pot of money guys that's the cold open budget so, it's uh here, here's another point you, you remember those stupid fucking circles i pointed out at the shoulder yep it's it's not touching the cloak at all. Well, that's why I said I don't think it has to do with the cloak. I think it's it's a decorative cap on the rivet in that uh, in that armor piece. Stupid. That's all I got to say about that. And now <laughs> I'm the... going going back to my whiskey. Fair. Also, like how the only good one is the one with the fucking helmet on. Now the others can afford a helmet. All right, guys, we're going to skip this because it's trash. Thank God. Oh, you guys remember this Stop. from the last episode? You need to open it again. Uh, we are not leaving without him. He made his choice. Hey, did he? Can I just say that I think that brief two seconds is the best this show has looked the entire time? No. Oh, yeah, because it was black. But the characters make a good point in terms of why don't you just open the gateway again it doesn't take that long i actually like but the it, did he make it they just got asked there <laughs> oh they're so yeah, they, dumb did, or did you make it for him rant what are you talking about buddy come on <laughs> did you make it for him? You know the darkness in him. Hey, Fuck off, boss, Marine, boss, my, uh, <laughs> Super goddess powers. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my my sister had uh, sent me quite a few notes to talk about this, and I promised Fantastic. that I would. Uh, mm -hmm. So let me uh, let me get this up. So that's uh, uh, Hannah from episode I don't remember of the rewatch. Yes, <laughs> seven. Sure. Sure. So uh this this was her her first first of many. Rand nuked a fortress, Perrin chopped the dude's limbs off and sold people into slavery. Even the supergirls led by Nynaeve tortured a prisoner for new spells. And even but even when possessed by an ultimate evil dagger, the worst thing Matt managed to do was hurt Rand's feelings. What darkness within him? <laughs> the next note. So, Hannah points out exactly. Matt, when possessed by the ultimate evil, or maybe not the dark one's evil, but the, the evil of suspicion, the worst thing he did under that spell was hurt someone's feelings. I'm actually... And I'm going to... A gonna... ton of character... H Hannah is a fucking champ. I, I just got to give it to her. So Hold I'm just going to point out here that actually uh, that is not necessarily inconsistent with the worldview of the people making this show. Oh, well, yeah. Hmm. Feelings are the worst thing you yeah. could ever hurt ever. This saying here's, here's, here's saying mean things is the literal worst. <laughs> here's where I disagree with you, Pips. He hurt the feelings of a white guy. Oh, okay. They they absolutely don't care about fair, that. Fair fair play, man. I mean, sometimes you just got to call down the patriarchy, you know? Like yep. yeah. So all right, let me uh, let me read uh note number 2. Okay. Isn't the band of the red hand the only volunteer army? Basically every other one in the setting are at least partially conscripts or co coerced. Like, it would be a valid debate whether the, even the fucking Malkiar armies or the Band of the Red Hand followed their leader more fervently loyal. Like, yeah, the Band of the Red Hand gets paid, but no one has to march to defend their homes or their lands. They fight under Matt because they think Matt is that good. Note number three. Do you know what says Inherent Darkness? When the young 20-something guy, fresh from a bloody series of battles where he watched countless men and women die, went out and adopted a small, dirty war orphan off the streets, took him in, gave him food, 
clothes, protection, and a better education than even Matt himself had. Like, Matt being barely literate is a meme, but Oliver is taught to read entire books by himself. Matt bought him a fast horse after knowing him for a few weeks. His dad was a horse trader. That's what paternal care looks like to him. And the way that Matt is so patient with him always reassures him despite fulfilling prophecies and leading armies, makes time to play with him. It makes me want to cry thinking about what they did to him. Matt Wholesome Boy. Yes. Yeah. So her, her, her final question was then, if they are talking about uh, inherent darkness within him because of an abusive home life, are they implying that people are powerless to break the cycle of abuse, and if they have a shitbag wife-beater dad, that they are doomed to have inherent darkness? Is that what the show is trying to tell us? It's a self-insert by Rafe, I think. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. That was, that was uh, <laughs> Hannah had very strong feelings about this particular line of dialogue. God. Yeah, it is pretty fucking bad what they do to do to our boy Matt. I mean, I think those were all pretty good. I honestly, I, I don't think I have anything better to say than that they just made this up out of whole cloth. There's nothing. There's nothing based to base this on. Yep, this was straight out of the Zack Snyder school of script writing. Need drama? Darken it up. <sighs> you know it what a disaster. Do you really think he's ready for what lies ahead? Of course he is. We've already Why does wasted it... too much time. Stay close. I like how she says we've already wasted too much time, despite knowing that at one point the they're going to camp in the ways. Unfortunately, reopening the Waygate would be impossible. There cannot be any use of the one power within the ways. To do so would be to throw yourself at Machin Shin. Thank you, Loyal, for pointing out something that we need to keep in mind going forward. The only way that you can open a way gate in this show is to use the one power. Yep. So, Pad and Fane was uh, assisted by a Black Aja member? Don't question, well, just consume more no. product. Well, <laughs> two things. One, that's stupid, considering the ways were partially made as a gift to the Trollocs, who don't use the one power, so pretty worthless gift. Oh, oh gear, and but yeah. Oh gear, sorry. <laughs> Brain fucked up for a minute. But, uh, and two, why do you think they even made this change? It's the most stupid one I've seen, because it's so pointless. Uh, Has Moraine... Gotta give a girl Moraine something. Yeah, Moraine needed her, uh, needed her stand there with her arms outstretched like she's on a cross with the angel wing kind of, you know, flows the one pattern or, or one power around her. They just did it for the shot. Yeah, I think that that's like you can explain most of this show if you think of like pick a five second like shot or scene and just say, cool, this was the payoff. The last five minutes of just nonsensical, just non sequitur dialogue, you know, this happens and then this happens with no linking between them. All of that is just to get to this point where the characters are in this position to have this camera shot of this thing. That's it. But why? I mean, like, because it's it's easier than going to South Carolina to shit on Robert Jordan's grave. <laughs> like, plane tickets are expensive now, man. There's <laughs> <laughs> your shot, and it's like loyal. <laughs> Kind of semi in frame with his red fucking wig and Star Trek case on makeup. Why? I still, I still cannot get over the fact that their their solution to creating an O gear was take a black person, now flatten their nose and give them extra curly hair and moon boots. Like, <laughs> like 
how racist are you people? Like, who did the they costume did. design for this? They the KKK? Fried chicken, for fuck's sake. <laughs> right? Uh, the most racist people on earth did this show. Like, fuck all... They call us racist? No, I'm calling out everyone involved with this production. You're fucking racist as shit. You're more racist than I am. I'm not racist <laughs> in the least, so that's not a very high hurdle to cross. Oh, you have your thing but, against uh, the checks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, but like honestly, if if you want to set like our modern day bars, like the checks being racist against them, that's that's like a two inch hurdle. Like that's not too bad. Like Look, the, the, the internet has told me a lot of things, but one of them was that it's impossible to be racist against white people. And the checks are still very much white as far as I've 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 No, realized. they're not. They're checks. So like I have to give this to fucking Pips, but like so, uh, yeah. now I think we would be cancelled. <laughs> What? what? Why? <laughs> For a bunch of fucking checks? No, like, fuck <laughs> off. But uh, I was saying, for sh a series that's inspired by Lord of the Rings by quite a bit, it's kind of weird to me how you have these creatures which are much bigger than everyone else, and you don't manage to do what the Lord of the Rings movie did to make the gear just these massive beings against everyone else. Like, you yeah, should be apparently... able to know how they did it. Force perspective is apparently trademarked now. Like <laughs> we went over that. <laughs> yeah. The come on. So oh, we've man. we've talked about this. I think we're like the only way it makes any sense is that they didn't even try, right? Because they like, didn't. So think about it. This scene right here, right? Every Hollywood movie that has ever had the leading man and leading lady, unless the leading man was Tom Cruise, if they had a kiss scene in the movie, <laughs> they solved. They solved this problem, right? Like this shot, you should have been looking at like all of, see how much we can see like Nynaeve. We can see like her shoulder all the way down to like her elbow. And then Egwene, same thing, shoulder all the way down to the elbow. The shot should have been panned up, right? And then we should have seen just their like shoulders and heads. And then we should have seen Loyal like a full head and a half taller than them. By having him stand standing on a box. Standing on a box. Like this yes. this shot right here, literally every single Hollywood movie has solved this problem since forever. This is like they've always known how to do this since, shot. Since the fucking twenty since before silent film. Yes. Right? So the the only Fuck. explanation is that they literally they just decided that loyal is that Ogiers are not going to be taller than people because it's too hard for them to do that in their show. That's it. Make Marvel. Fuck. Marvel managed to make Peter Dinklage a fucking giant, and the man is two feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> so I people people who talk about this show and think that these people actually tried to to do an adaptation don't seem to understand how fucking easy these shots would be. Like I've never made a movie. I could make this shot look better. It's not hard, but I agree with you. Yeah. And ask it to feast on your soul. What? Fuck off, Loyal. That's is, not what happens. I was going to say, is that what Mashin Chin is going to do? <laughs> Give me a second. Or say shitty things to you. <laughs> it's not going to say shitty things. It's just going to say true things to you. Oh, man. Mashin Chin showed them what they could not accept. The truth. That is what these people most fear. The people writing this. Yeah. I love this question. What is Mashin Shin? Like, lady, <laughs> you live in this world. You know what this is. You've read a book. We've <laughs> hey, we've heard stories about the ways, but none of us know what the ways are. <laughs> That's true. There's a very explicit line of dialogue that says we've heard about the ways, but apparently in none of those books that told them about the ways, nobody mentioned the giant. I'll give it to them. Soul eating monster that apparently lives in it. Yeah. It apparently in these books is just a shitty hallway. Like I understand that in the books, I think it's true that they just don't know what the ways are, which kind of makes sense. The ways have been impassable for like 
several human generations, and they were always used primarily by Ogier, right? So, yeah, most people probably never really use the ways, uh, and they've they've basically just fallen out of like knowledge of things, right? Fine. But to know about the ways and not know what they are and to not know that they're tainted, like, that's crazy. But, yeah, that was last episode. Well, yeah, it's, it, it. it's what I brought up in the, the previous episode. It's yeah. basically, like, there yeah. should have been some terror built into, okay, being forced into this option rather than yeah. what they do here. Where it's yeah. like, hey, after we all decide to go in, it's when it gets scary. Fucking Star Trek Voyager version scenes. How? <laughs> Loyal is supposed to be leading. <laughs> why? Let's bring up an excellent question why they grabbed him if not to lead through the ways. Ogier are not no known for their speed. Dane, you got any got any comments on that? I, I seem to remember an okay, Ogier con- making a bet with Perrin. Yeah, they, they can outrun a horse, but it's like not in terms of speed, but like pick and fucking choose your lane. Like you brought Loyal along, even though you don't need him to open anything. And apparently you don't need him to guide yes. for anything. We talked about it. Loyal's there to carry the packs because they couldn't bring horses and the show producers are racist. They need to make the black person carry all the stuff for the white people. Or, well, some white people and then some not. I was going to say, uh, Adio, you said that you're Indian. How do you feel about the use of colored people as literal Sherpas in this show? <laughs> this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> like, yes. fuck. You're well, not what? helping yourself, show writers. You're being retarded. Like, so, I, I just don't, like... No. Edmund Hillary was the first guy to ever climb Mount Everest, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, I, now I'm being racist and canceled, but let's go. So one of, one of the like, best lines in this entire book series, I, I believe it's a memory of light. It's the uh, loyal son of Arendt, son of Holland, had secretly always wanted to be hasty. Like that's that's one of my all time favorite lines. So how are we? Gears aren't known for our speed, buddy. You love you love speed. You're Dominic Toretto of the O gear, like because <laughs> because your thing, man. Because yeah. he's got a need for speed, and he's all about family. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's the O gear equivalent of one with ADHD. <laughs> oh man, yeah, we didn't leave Matt. He left us. Fuck that dude. He left us. Fuck you, Egwene. I believe that, do you? And what are we going to do? We can't open the way gate. We can't find our way out of here without them. Should we just sit down and die? Clearly Close not. your mouth. Isn't, isn't that what you do in the battle, Perrin? <laughs> when this is all over, you'll find him. I promise you that. Shut up, Naive. Oh shit, I, I just planned on never seeing him again. <laughs> hey, you know that thing about how when we all go to the eye of the world, all of us are going to die, except for like the one person who's apparently Egwene. Remember that thing? Yeah, but when it's all when over, it's all we'll over. all be alive. <laughs> oh, fuck. Remember, he has brain damage. He doesn't remember that. <laughs> yeah, but he hasn't been drinking as much as I have been Matt. drinking. There's an inherent darkness within. Him. Fuck off. Fuck off, moron. He was drawn to the dagger, and it was feeding on him. As much so as he was much of this show is actually explained. Shut up, you two. If you think that Rand and I can't let him is a little damsy. I already know what choice he'd make. <laughs> right. The one thing that we can't well, afford is for the dragon to turn to the shadow. Well, what is? You're... Did they rewrite yeah. the whole fucking show in order to accommodate Barney Harris realizing that this this whole fucking production was a giant fucking um, it's a polite way of putting this uh, um, 
It was a grooming a ring of, for it, Rafe Judkins. No, it, it's kind of like a baby green poop smoothie with a couple of floating bits of nutty corn crunch and classic brown kind of uh, in between, and you got to blend together. Like, he he knew that this was absolute dog shit, and he decided, yeah, not going to stick around for this. And as a result, they rewrote a ton of this to basically turn Matt into this guy with the darkness within him. And we can't let him within a hundred miles of the dark one because he would turn to the dark and that's how everything would go bad. And as a result of that, we need to make sure that the real challenge is that it's not, you know, the dragon to fight the uh, dark one. It's more the dragon comes and has a choice. Either he needs to go good or go bad. Sorry, I'm rambling here, but it's like, does that make sense to you guys? Did they retcon this stuff for Barney Harris? Yes or no? Yes, they 100% did. They legitimately had to rewrite much of these last two episodes on the fly. And people will use that to defend the show, to which I'm going to say, no, you still did a terrible job with it. Like, I understand you were put in a bad position losing an actor, but you still did a shit job of it. Like, they, they well, were we, only in a bad position because their show fucking sucked and their lead actor decided to bug out. So like, e- either either he had a drug problem, which is their fault, or he basically had class and decided that this fucking show sucked and he bugged out. Or uh, the people running the show were a bunch of fucking queer perverts who wanted uh, Barney Harris to suck them off in a tent uh, like late at night, which is also their fucking fault. So all I'm going to say is, regardless of why Barney Harris left, right? First of all, it's still on the showrunner. The showrunner's mm-hmm. job is to literally solve those types of problems. That's why that. That's why they have somebody who's an executive producer, showrunner. That's why you have the person who who does that job. Like the yeah. buck stops there, bud. Like, sorry, he, man. He's Josh fucking um, Brolin from like uh, Hail Caesar. Yeah, that that's your fucking job. So there's there's that aspect that like just because it put him in a hard spot doesn't mean that friggin' Rafe Judkins doesn't still catch the blame for that. It's like, no, dude, you still are the person responsible. You can sit here and whine and be like, oh, it was tough. But like ultimately, a more experienced showrunner would have solved this better. And everybody fucking knows it. And that's why they just want to try and try and not not talk about his role and his job, because as soon as you acknowledge that he's the guy who is supposed to solve this then you have to admit that he did a shit job at literally the only thing that he did other than writing the two worst episodes of the series. Um, and then the other thing... First and last. Yeah. And then the other thing is, okay, fine. Barney Harris left. We talked about this last episode. They had such an easy solution to that problem that didn't just shit and piss all over the lore, which is just say that he was still recovering with the yellows. So fucking easy. And I, like, I, there's even a there's even a third option. Just recast a mid show. Yeah. Just I, I mean, we we are we were in a world when this premiered that the entire world was on fire. Yeah. Like, I couldn't go out to a bar because like everything was shut down for COVID. Like, I absolutely would have accepted. Hey, I'm gonna need you to make a small sacrifice in this show, and we pulled some some random guy in to do this. Like hey, that, just to do a fr- that would have fresh been- Prince of Bel Air, right? It's like, and now the part of uh, what's her name, like uh, the mom, yeah, will now be played by such and such, and she was like seven shades lighter. But so the the Wouldn't point that you make as egregious, but the point that you make is even more interesting when you realize that. This show and Amazon clearly has no actual release schedule, given that there's literally no release date for season two. So, like, they have no problem with just rolling fucking release dates to solve problems and try and fix the shit in post. Like, they could have just released it later. They could have just said, yeah, one of our lead actors quit, and now we have to find a new dude, call in our understudy, which is hilarious that I guess this show literally doesn't have seconds for any of these roles, even though that's there's a name for that job of being an understudy for a role, because, again, 
actors in cinema has known about this problem since literally fucking forever. So hey, wait, who who's played Baldur's Gate two and knows Biff the understudy? Raise your hand. Just me? Okay. Uh, no one has hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we we've talked nah. about this too long. Let's let's we have let's go. Well, tangent. Well, ADO, okay. you you got something to say here, so go ahead. Two things. Very small note on what you guys are talking about. To prove that he did a bad job, you literally have to come up with a solution in less than a few minutes, which you guys have come up with two, and we could easily come up with more. If you can do that, he fucked up. It's his job to come up with better stuff within days. Just screw off. And two, Moron's logic here to leave Matt behind, she cannot, if he, he has the darkness in him, I can't let him come to the shadow. Then what the fuck are you gonna do about him? Because all you're doing right now is feeding five people or four. There's a four or five people that she's trying to feed to the dark one right now. It's like, yeah, what yeah. is your plan? Yeah. You're just leading them to death. You know this. This is what the show has been constantly saying. So either you are about to kill several people for no reason, leaving your supposed dragon behind to let him run away from you, do whatever fuck knows, and become more dangerous until you can't contain him. Or two, he's not the dragon, and then this excuse just means bullshit. You just don't think he's the dragon, and you're thinking it's one of them because of whatever bullshit. You, for some reason, have disqualified well, him. That's ADO, it's... Wait, wait, wait. It's not like she's had 20 fucking, fucking, fucking years to think about this. It is funny because oh. going back to the books, uh, if this was the problem she was considering, she just has a 33% chance of having left the dragon behind. Yes, Trucy. <laughs> yes. And maybe like, maybe that's why they had to introduce the five Tavirin because they're like, no one will buy. She's this dumb. We need to increase her odds. Twenty <laughs> <laughs> percent chance, chance of that. Uh... Yeah, that's more believable. People people will bet the fate of the universe on a twenty percent chance. They're not going to do it on a third. A third? Come on. <laughs> that's too risky. It's too risky, Pips. Let's keep going. We we got to get through this. Fucking retarded. Space so Oyster's the... name from Chlorine is great. Moron, but fucking retarded is basically the name of the show in meme form. And so... you guys are telling me, th this is so Star Trek Voyager, right? This is Kazon Underworld, Hexagon, Pillars of Rock, and shit. Like, it's the what only thing I could think of. Like two. Like, so, I don't remember that. I've and I've seen I've seen that season. Oh, I don't. This is the most basic way to recreate the way. Is I'm sorry. There is. It is really. I feel like it's a just a few tweaks. One, you need to see the ground. I get you're trying to make it look all dark, but part of the terror of the ways is the crumbling rock around. That's all you can see. It's not about yeah. seeing nothing. It's about what Amen, little you brother. can see. A yeah. yeah. Amen. Well you, done. You just, yeah. you just need to make the lighting a bit more contrast against everything else and see the ground. And the ground will have to be crumbling and rotting because that's the point of the way. Is It was something beautiful that's now a withering, dying horror show. It is a trash factory, that what they did to it, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a filmmaker or someone who knows how, like, to get good scenes or lighting or stuff. I don't have the best eye for that. But even I can see, like, the small ways you could tweak it. Yeah. The fucking lightning bothers me every time. Right? Yeah. They, ca they caught a thunderstorm in the ways. Oh, I, I, but just to be clear, Loyal is not in the front. No. In that shot there, you had Moraine and you had Lan in front. In these is there, is is there like any explanation given for why Loyal has a lantern and all the other ones have torches? <laughs> back, back it up. Let me see that. That's these. Torch. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Whatever. I I'll just say now now There's we're on no reason. now we're on torch watch. If he has a torch later. <laughs> Man, the man who carries the packs carries the lantern. Or horse watch is over, torch watch begins. And now our torch watch begins. 
Oh, thanks, Alex. Soft. Also, yeah, they're not having horses. Why are you not having horses? <laughs> but now, one wrong it, the, the answer was... is they made the ways, and they, no, they're walking fuck. on styrofoam. No. Fuck! If you said something was verdant and now and covered in grass, you're being redundant. That's yep. all I gotta say. Fuck. I, I mean, literally, if you want, if you want to know why they don't have horses. They're they're walking on styrofoam. They made a styrofoam platform, painted it black, and that's what they're walking on. And they, they didn't want the horses walking on styrofoam. Hexagons, yeah, yeah. That's almost certainly what they did. Which is which is really funny because they could have just had them walk on the ground. And then is it is it harder to do CGI against ground than it is against black painted styrofoam? <laughs> Yes. Uh, what, what do you want me to say, man? <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's actually a sound thing. The sound guy, like they tried it with the horses, and the sound guy was like, "Hey, man, there's no way for me to get rid of that terrible squeeching every time the hoofs come down on the styrofoam." Plummet <laughs> uh, into a void which knows no end. Oh, worse. There's something worse than falling into a bottomless pit. Oh, yes, sir. I think Shut you up, it's queen. It's all right, Loyal. We understand. Hmm. Shut up, Rand. Is that funny? Did you all laugh? Didn't Is they? It... No. Nope. Nope. Didn't they? Uh... I didn't realize I was supposed to. Didn't they do this whole thing, like, basically in silence because of, like, again, the, like, pressure that they, like, felt? Yeah, I was about to say the the, vo the thing in the way should be really fucking quiet. Yeah. There should be no sound, no no background noise, no nothing, and talking should be very little. Yeah, I feel like the only thing that they heard was the the hoofs on the uh the paving stones were like pretty much all they had for like days in the ways, which again contributed to the scene. Ugh. I'm pretty sure they also talked quietly because this is that kind of place. Like, suppression of light, suit. suppression of sound. <laughs> I no owe scouting. Moraine three silvers. I I'm pouting. Silver what? Pennies? Crowns? <laughs> Marks? I don't know who's the arbiter that decides the difference between scowling and pouting. <laughs> I'll do it. One's eyebrows, one's mouth. I am the arbiter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, ADO, you can do it. I don't really want to. I'll, uh, hey guys, me. are you uh, feeling the chemistry between these two characters? Yeah, that was, well, that was a great line. Not, unt not until they fucking bone next episode. Yeah. Well, this, this is, this is. People use this to justify that, like, they're flirting. It's safer there than is here. I can promise you that. Fuck off, land. And you, on account of the fact that your Aes Sedai sent the fucking red Aja after him? Wait, 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 wait. wait. That, that wait, wait, comes wait, wait. up. There's something deeper wait. here. There's something deeper here. He's okay. still got his mouth open. There, there's, some, <laughs> there's something deeper here, guys, that we gotta talk about. Okay. Alright, Lan bet that she would be scowling or pouting, right? That was the bet. Which presumably mm -hmm. happened off camera with Moraine before they went into the ways because we've been seeing them. It would be pretty awkward if Lan walks up to Moraine while they're all standing around. It's like, hey, you want to make a bet on this bitch over there? Uh, so presumably this happened before that, right? Uh, True and, that. And the True bet that. appears from the dialogue to be about Nynaeve's reaction to Matt being left behind because in response to her reaction, he tries to assure her about Matt's safety. Oh, that's huh? a good, that's a good point. I, I, you could probably make the argument that they were talking about the ways. Why would Not she be Matt, scowling but... or pouting about the ways? Because she's naturally a scowling, pouty person. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I think neither here nor there. I think no. They were Super... planning. They were planning on leaving Matt the entire time. <laughs> Pips, I'm going to have to discuss this after the fact because I've had way too much whiskey now <laughs> to uh, make a salient uh, assessment of 
uh, <laughs> your argument. I think I just need to keep going, get through this. Fair enough. Even though he's saying wait right now for us to talk about it, but no, we'll keep going. Yeah. What? There's it's very up meta. There's something up there. Shut up, Perrin. It's good because see, his vision is so much better than theirs, guys. He was at the back and he saw it the, all the way up there. He saw what? What was did Perrin's, he see? One of the guiding stones. Was Perrin's vision in the ways better than everyone else's, or was the suppression kind it of was. equal? Yeah, his his vision was better, yeah. but he saw a rock with some scratch marks on it amongst all the other irregularly shaped rocks. Really? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> As, this would have been so much more significant if they showed us like real guiding stones first but they fucking yep. didn't or if we had seen weren't there like trollocs like frozen in like agonizing death yeah um not 100% if that was in either the shadow world, rising or, or the shadow yeah. rising where, yeah where it I, came after yeah it might have it might have been in the shadow rising the ways. but like that yeah that would have been better because he could have said there, there are there are people ahead, or there's something up ahead of us, and then it would have been a group of like petrified, you know, dying trollocs, right? So, anyway, this is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Why does he touch it and then rub his fingers? Well, no, it's the it's... trolloc markings on these stones should be in their own script guiding them to the portals that the Trollocs know. Yeah, well, there's kind right? of an arrow pointing back towards them. So, like, you know, there's something there. I just wanted to know, was he testing for clue goo? Was he, is that why he yeah, kind of touched probably. it, rubbed it his is... fingers, gave it a little sniff? Uh, I'm drunk. That's, that's generous. You're not as drunk as I am. <laughs> I am the right, let, one that must I keep hate. us going. <laughs> yeah, we we gotta we gotta finish here. We're almost we're almost I'll there. We're almost at the break. Oh fuck! No <laughs> we we got a second one to do. It's oh jeez! No ogre would deface a guiding. Well, why are the ogres here? Can he still read it? How can they get into the ways with? Wait 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 wait. Power? They they put trollic blood on the guiding stone for the close-up shot and didn't put it for the far shot really yeah if you go back to the close-up you'll notice the trollic goo damn it i guess that's what he was putting his freaking fingers in all right let's so close and so now we gotta go back to it. keep people from finding their way but can he still see look at the goo blood? Uh, I saw goo. It didn't look also, like blood necessarily. Who would try and find their way? Sir, I, don't, I don't know if it's blood, but it's also, some kind of goo. Don't the trollocs need the goddamn guiding stones? They're the literal only things with directions. It's a day's journey at least. Who would try and fucking navigate the ways? Take some comfort while you can. You need an Aes Sedai to fucking open it up. Apparently. <sighs> you need an Ogier to show you the way, apparently. Do you know what did that to the guiding? God damn. I just, I, I am to, uh, I'm to, uh, Lords of Chaos in my reread. I oh, cannot picture Rand. Land. I just, every time I watch it, he's less Rand-like. Yes. Yeah, he's a big old bitch. Why is there growling in the distance? Is a fucking wolf here? Or no, not wolf, dog. <laughs> Probably. And Fane. Uh, foreshadowing the trollic that's going to ambush them. Yeah. They literally did the thing of you do more and that's worse. No sound would have been better. Alright, they're betting. Oh, God. They're betting down for the night. Um, Those torches are still going pretty strong. You know, in the books, this had one of my uh, favorite scenes where Perrin managed to. Uh, Say fuck you to Egwene when she was kind of interrogating Rand. Okay. Sorry. Um, when when we play this again, if you guys can just kind of let it play, I'll try and boost the audio for the uh, the playback. Did you guys hear the starting tones of this music? 
It's not. Okay. So let's let's try and listen for it, and I'll try and boost it when we uh, upload it to YouTube here. But uh, people talk about how great the soundtrack in this show is. Tell me if, if this, well, some people, some people do. Uh, tell me if this music is at all appropriate for the ways. It's music, so no. Jesus. I like how Egwene is holding Rand's hand and being like, don't worry, bitch. I'll take care of you. Uh, Fuck off. The love, okay. the love triangle. It's the happening. Triangle. It's happening. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fuck uh, off. Uh, yeah. Just when I thought this couldn't get any dumber. So remember what I said about how this show only makes sense when you think that they like in within the episode, they have some bullshit payoff. And so they make nonsensical garbage to try and pay off for some little bullshit fake fan fiction scene that does nothing to advance yep. the plot or develop the characters and is non-canonical in every way, right? Yeah, so par for the course. They just ruined the tension in the ways to have the little romantic fucking Dawson's Creek soundtrack for this shot of I Rand and wait Egwene. For my love to be over. That's basically the same. Like that's the same melody. It's literally that song. <laughs> so generally, okay. they did. Candle. <laughs> they did that scene just to have this motherfucker look sad so that later they could do another bullshit scene that made the series worse. <laughs> ah. Hey, wait, ADO, I'm going to say fuck the show, but you got something to add? Not currently. All Just right. All right. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, this is basically the uh, end. I think I think this pans to a to a, like an overhead shot here. Fucking music. Why are they hugging? There we go. That's the end. Good. All right. Okay. Like the women and men be sleeping on like different sides. No, they fucked already, nah. and everybody knows it. I I know that. I mean, like normally in the books, they had it on different sides. <laughs> Wait, what? Books? There are books the book. for this? <laughs> All right. Okay. This is our mid-episode break. Everyone in the chat, thank you for coming out for this. Thank you for contributing and giving your thoughts on what is arguably... I don't know if it's the worst the show had to offer, but it's getting up there. And, and I will say for, for my part... Um, this is more painful than the previous three episodes because this is trying to be close to the books, but is failing at so many levels. So for everyone um, watching this on YouTube, we are going to do a break here. Uh, my thoughts are succinct. I'll say this sucks fucking dick. It sucks fucking chode. It sucks fucking asshole. It sucks even the fucking hairs like coming down into the asshole that don't get the proper ass wipe um, to clean them off. Like this, this dingleberries sucks. You're, you're thinking of dingleberries. Yeah, I am. <laughs> it, it, it's pure. This is up to dingleberry level. But before we get into something more serious, which is the next part of this, we got to break it off YouTube wise. Pips, Alex, final word to ADO. Pips, what do you think of this fucking part of this episode? I think people have heard me talk a lot, so I'll keep it short. That, uh, like you said, this was this was something that a lot of book readers probably were looking forward to, and they punted it like into the fucking abyss off the side of a platform in the ways. <laughs> like this, uh, yeet. Alex? Piece of advice for everybody. Huh? Don't smoke crack, kids. Don't <laughs> smoke crack. It's bad for you. Um, 
That's the only thing that I can conclude people were thinking when they decided that the best thing to do about the ways is to have a little kerfuffle about Matt leaving and then use it to build up drama for a love triangle. Crack is whack. So to that smack, you'll end up on your back. Don't be a hack. Yeah. Dan's drunk. Idio, what do you got? <laughs> when I know I can do better than you, you have failed. When I know a 15-year-old could do better than you, you have failed. When I know someone illiterate who had who was told off the Wikipedia page what to do could do better, you have failed. You have done even worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, aspiring dark one, hold on to your butt then, bud, because... The second part of this is even worse. Yeah. Does not get better. No, it does not. <laughs> it, only, it only gets worse. <laughs> uh, what do you guys say? Time to time to refill glasses and come back, come back uh, shortly for the Discord chat and on Thursday for YouTube. Uh, and yeah. everybody following along with us, uh, like comment subscribe share with a friend uh we love you all uh as far as the youtube goes we love you all on the discord so if you're on discord and you don't know about us or haven't subbed yet yeah just just give it to us we appreciate it um we've only got a couple of these to go like i said like we're on episode seven and it's only going downhill from here holy fuck all right. We'll be back soon, guys. Walk in the light.